major objective of improving the handling of third-party liability claims is to obtain complete, accurate information so a fair and equitable determination can be made as to the validity of the claim. First of all, a third-party liability claim is a claim made against the company by a non-employee. It could be a customer, visitor, vendor, or anyone else not an employee. The claim may be for an injury or property damage. The very first rule is to get as much information as possible about the claim. News reporters have an old saying, if you find out the who, what, when, where, why, and how, you've got the information to make a story. This is true in accident and claims investigations. You must get the who, what, when, where, how, and why information before the true story is written. Get the information as soon as an accident occurs or the claim is filed, as you may not get a second chance to obtain the needed information. Don't think someone else will be able to follow up or obtain more facts. The scene of the accident or when the person is submitting a claim is the best time to get the most information. You may only get one chance to obtain information, and this information may be all the company has to defend the claim. Keep in mind, the information you obtain may not be used for three to five years. That's why investigation and reporting is critical. This also underscores the need for the information to be factual, clear, and complete. Okay, let's review some basic guidelines for handling non-employee injuries. All employees should be trained in company procedures relating to the action to be taken in the event of a customer or non-employee injury. As a minimum, employees must never admit liability or even suggest the fault of an accident. Often, employees will be sympathetic when anyone is injured, which is a natural reaction. However, agreeing with the injured party as to the fault of the accident is extremely detrimental. Do not admit any liability. It's the same as if you're in an automobile accident. Your insurance company states never to admit fault or responsibility. If the accident was your fault, facts of the investigation will make the determination. Your job and the job of all employees is to let trained insurance or legal staff make this determination. In the event of a non-employee injury, the seriousness of the injury will dictate the action to be taken. Management must always be notified to handle the situation. If the injury isn't serious and the injured person wants medical treatment, he or she should be referred to his or her own physician. Do not administer first aid unless it's a life-threatening situation such as serious bleeding or unconsciousness. The primary reason is that you are not doctors. Application of medicine such as mercurochrome or iodine may result in an unwanted reaction to the medicine. You may then be held responsible for practicing medicine without a license or some other claim. Of course, you want to assist the injured person and provide courteous treatment, but there are just some things you cannot do. If the injured person simply wants a Band-Aid out of the first aid kit, you may provide the Band-Aid, but the injured person must apply the Band-Aid. Now, I know this sounds a bit cautious, but these precautions are based on many years' experience and records of thousands of third-party liability claims. So don't administer medicine to non-employees. Naturally, don't move a seriously injured person. That's a job for medical personnel. If a person is unconscious or unable to give instructions as to what hospital or doctor is preferred, then notify the police department in addition to emergency medical assistance. If available, the next of kin should be notified for instructions or assistance. Any instructions received from the police, emergency medical personnel, or next of kin should always be included in the accident report with the name of the person providing the information. When store employees witness or are told of an accident, management personnel or other designated store authorities should be immediately notified to handle the accident. Above all, remain calm and try to put the injured person at ease. Assure the injured person that medical assistance is on the way. Tact, accompanied by good judgment, 
is critical. Courteously assist the injured person. Again, caution must be exercised by not admitting fault or making incriminating statements. If the injured person did not drive to your store and appears not to be seriously injured, a taxi cab may be called to convey the person home or to his or her preferred physician. You should pay for the cab ride as a courtesy. Under no circumstances should an injured person be transported anywhere by a company vehicle or a vehicle owned by an employee. Normally, the first thing an injured person will want to know is, who's going to pay for the medical treatment? Do not, repeat, do not make any representation that the company will pay for any incurred expenses. Your answer to this should be, a representative of the company will contact you. Don't say, our insurance company will contact you. Simply state, a representative of the company will contact you. Store personnel have no authority to make the decision of who will pay for medical treatment. It's up to someone else to make that decision. Let's review some basic guidelines for you to remember. First, don't offer to pay medical expenses. Don't admit responsibility. Don't mention insurance. Don't apologize for the accident. Don't argue the cause of the accident. Don't reprimand another employee at the scene of an accident. And don't discuss the accident with strangers now or in the days or weeks following the accident. Certainly there are other specific rules, but the most important thing to remember is to write down all facts, dates, times, things the injured person said, and any other facts you can determine. Don't admit responsibility or liability, and be polite and courteous to the injured person. Should you receive a telephone call about an accident or injury that occurred in your store earlier, be sure to write down all information provided by the caller. Date, time of call, name of person calling, telephone number and address. And indicate on your report that this was a telephone notification for a claim. After you've gathered all the information from the injured person relating to the accident and the injured person has left your store, go over the information again. You heard the injured person's side of the accident. It's now up to you to develop as many facts as possible. If possible, find witnesses to the accident, customers and employees. Obtain statements from witnesses as to what they saw. In the case of customer witnesses, be sure to get their names, addresses, and telephone numbers if at all possible. Employee witnesses should be identified by their full names, addresses, and phone numbers, as quite frequently, employees don't always update their personnel files when they move or change telephones. The best time to interview witnesses is immediately after the accident, as facts will be fresh and easily recalled. Photographs of the accident scene are particularly valuable. If at all possible, take photographs of the accident scene from two or three different angles and include any equipment that may have been involved. It's a good idea to check the floor for slipperiness or for any spilled liquids that could have contributed to the accident. The information gathered from the injured person is also of value. Observations of witnesses, such as what type of shoes were being worn, high heels, sandals, and so forth, can be helpful. Comments made by the injured person, such as, I wasn't watching where I was walking, or I do this at home a lot, or other statements, should be recorded on the report. A good investigation answers the who, what, when, where, why, and how. But also, you're developing a report that can be read by someone who's never visited your store or the accident scene so they can see the facts of the accident and have a good idea what happened. You have names and addresses of witnesses, medical personnel, and others involved. Should additional investigations be required, investigators have the necessary information with which to continue the investigation. Certainly, the majority of claims will be non-injury claims. Regardless, the same type of information and the same degree of accuracy and thoroughness is required. If a customer complains about vehicle damage, take photographs of the alleged damage. 
torn clothing, or other claims require reports and investigations. Your job is to get as much information as possible. We know you're busy with a million other things to do, but creating a careful and comprehensive report listing facts, observations, and witnesses will be of value to the company and your store. Remember, the details of the accident and the information in your report may not be used until five years from now. Many things will change in that time, so the information gathered and reported at the time of the accident or claim is extremely important. Your accident report is confidential. Information must not be released to anyone except persons authorized by the company to have the information. You should never provide anyone information about an accident over the telephone unless you can verify their authorization. Should your store receive an attorney's letter or other legal paper regarding an accident or other legal action, that letter or form must be referred to the designated legal department for action. Don't wait. Notify the company's designated representative and send the form in as quickly as possible. It must be answered, and that's the job of the legal department. Customers are important to your store. If a customer has been wronged, you want to make it right. If a customer is trying to rip you off, you don't want that to happen. After all, rip-offs cost you money, too. The most effective method of ensuring fair, responsible claims handling is to gather the information, put it in a comprehensive, readable report, and let the insurance or legal department make the final determination. The objective of accident investigation and reporting is to get the facts as accurately and as completely as possible. Developing information is the most important part of any accident investigation. A thorough investigation doesn't take any more time, and it makes a world of difference in protecting the assets of your company. Thank you.